Well, they're certainly driving to survive this year, albeit for a little bit of a different reason. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for the third season of Drive to Survive, the Formula One Netflix documentary special series returns. And this season, obviously, it's talking about all the hardships that the teams went through with the COVID basically kind of canceling almost a quarter of the beginning of the Formula One season, the strives that teams went through, the inclusion of Racing Point kind of really mixing of things up and causing a little bit of a stir of controversy, the choices that management had to make with certain teams and certain drivers, some decisions raising quite an eyebrow in terms of the choices, but also some being for the better. I will say though, however, when I finished the second season and then the pandemic and everything started, I thought, this is it. This for sure is the year that I'm actually going to 100% pay attention to what's happening in Formula One. And right when the races came back, I was going back to work. So I kind of lost out and I just missed every single race somehow last year. I got highlights and whatnot. This time I actually did. For instance, I just saw Hamilton hold off or Stappen in that race at Brom. That was a fantastic defense. And this year I'm very excited to see what's going on as we go through this because I've got a little bit of money riding on something. But going back to the third season, it was very interesting to see the strives that the companies went through during COVID. I admittedly kind of wanted a little bit more of the numbers. The fact that not a single team really filed for bankruptcy amazes me. Considering every single other sports league went through absolute hell to try and get themselves back in the sport, Formula One, I feel, kind of came back a little bit faster than most did. But I was very curious. I thought at least if not Haas, our Williams was gonna 100% file for bankruptcy, but they didn't. Speaking of Haas, they had a quite an interesting take in this season. Not only did they fire both of their drivers, the one of their drivers, while still on that cancellation contract, almost died. Grosjean went right into that wall and nearly blew up and somehow walked out of fire. It was amazing. That was one of probably the best moments in this documentary series. The other two being when Carlos Sainz went from back of the pack to win a race. That was amazing. My favorite moment, actually funnily enough, once again is Gasly when he won his race with AlphaTauri. And considering how he had been plucked from Red Bull because they thought he wasn't good enough, and then to see Alex Albon fail, unintentionally of course, but just not give enough to maintain the position that he was given when Gasly left, and to see Gasly succeed was both great and disheartening at the same time because I liked Alex Albon. I, I thought he was a cool, cool guy. Admittedly, as a racer, I didn't think he was that great, but I thought maybe he would have a chance. But unfortunately, that obviously has not proven to be so with what the new Red Bull lineup is. Admittedly, I feel that this season was kind of put together kind of haphazardly, as was the entire thing of F1. The fact that they were able to make some very interesting pieces in it. I, I very much like that. And the one part that I thought that was a little interesting considering how outspoken Lewis Hamilton was about it was the George Floyd incident and just the idea of how racism was so on the peak of everyone's radar at the, at the uh, during last year with everything that what happened from George Floyd to all the stuff that happened in both in the United States and around the world. I found that odd that they kind of just tacked that on at the end. I Obviously, they want to focus on the racing. They want to focus on that, but that was a pretty big kind of part for Lewis Hamilton's kind of credit as being one of the best racers in Formula One history and his nationality and his race. I thought that was kind of odd that they just kind of tacked it on to the end. I thought they would make an episode about it considering the lacking amount of content that they had for this season. But personal moments I did enjoy was the McLaren team, those two racers. It was sad to see them split, but at the same time, they were very funny together. I, I liked that camaraderie as well as rivalry between the two, but obviously that has now moved on. Either way, I enjoyed season three, but it's not my favorite one. I would definitely say two, or particularly one. One is the one that got me into it in the first place. But obviously now with a much more filled in lineup in terms of races and also me keeping track of what's actually happening this time, maybe this fourth season when it will come out eventually will be a lot more fulfilling for me, but that's just me personally. Either way, I don't give a review for documentary series, but if you guys are interested in F1 or you're thinking about getting interested into F1, I would highly suggest you guys watch the last three seasons. Heck, you could even just watch the one that just happened, this third season, and you would still kind of get into it, especially if you go from that into F1 now. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise,
See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.